Jack Hanna's Into the Wild is brought to you by Nationwide and the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, partners in conservation for over 30 years. Hi everybody, I'm Jack Hanna, coming to you from my home base here at the Columbus Zoo. Welcome to Into the Wild. Today I'm hitting the ground running in South Africa's Zululand. The cheetahs where? Straight ahead there. Oh my gosh. Wait a minute, hold it. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is like Dung Ball City. It's a race against the clock. Look, it's going, it's going, it's going. Oh, <laughs> In a race for survival. A poacher would come in here and kill that mom and take her horn. And... Disgusting, hey? Welcome to us, welcome to Zululand. Yeah. Zululand's fierce animals and warriors are next as we head into the wild. In South Africa, 300 miles east of Johannesburg, a game reserve stretches for thousands of acres. Rare animals roam safely. Stunning landscapes are everywhere you look. And you can even catch a glimpse of a traditional Zulu culture. This is the Zulu Nyala Game Reserve. This morning, my daughter Kathleen and I are heading out on a game drive with Nikki Shaw, whose parents founded the reserve. I couldn't believe it. The minute we met Nikki, she said a cheetah had just made a kill, right? It was amazing, so we wanted to see what was going on there because the cheetah was one of the few carnivores they had there. The cheetah killed somewhere out in this place? Yep. Oh, there you go. Look, look, look. Oh, wow. There it is. Look at that. When did that happen, Nikki? This morning. Jeez. Sure enough, we spotted the Nyala carcass in the bush by the side of the road. We could tell it was a fresh kill, and very little had been eaten so far. It looks like the cheetah's not done eating yet. Is it things around here? Yeah, definitely. Um, in this reserve, because we don't have lion and not very many hyenas, she'll chill around, um, wait around the kill. It was very exciting as we approached the kill. It was right next to the road, which was great for us because we got to see all the action. But then when Nikki said, let's hop out of the vehicle, everything's fine. Even if the cheetah's around, you'll be safe. My heart stopped and I thought, hold on a minute. You know, I've seen cheetahs run before. I've seen them make a kill. I was nervous about getting out of the vehicle. The cheetah's where? There, straight ahead there. Oh my gosh. Wait a minute, hold it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What did you see right behind the keel, hidden there? You couldn't even see it, the camouflage. What was it? It was the cheetah yeah. incredibly close to us. About 20 feet. Whoa. Look at this. So Nikki, I, I think I know I that I was right, because I could tell the way she, a lot of cats will start at the rear end, but maybe she was having a baby, you think, or going to? Yeah, well, it yeah. was pregnant. Yep. Yeah. So when we saw the impala and we got close to it, its belly was very big, and Dad mentioned that it might be pregnant. And you said that sometimes that's an easy way for the cheetah to take down its prey. And there's no doubt in my mind, she was underneath that bush there, probably in labor, uh, trying to have the, the baby. And just that split second, all they want is that split second that they have to, to, to make the approach, and that's what happened, I think. We decided to take a closer look at the cheetah as she relaxed in the grass just 20 feet away. How old is she? So she's about six. Does she had babies? Yeah, two litters. Wow. She's gorgeous. Like her babies left her. I guess she's a, a solitary cat now. Yeah. Oh, look at her. So Nikki, is she just kind of chilling right now? I guess the kill would have um, expanded a lot of energy. So is she just kind of getting her strength back? Yeah, she's already eaten. Um, so you know when you have a full tummy and you don't really yeah. want to move. Yeah. She almost looks like she's going to take a nap, doesn't she? Yeah. I can't believe we're this close. What a <laughs> treat. Thank you. Cool. Let's go before she decides right. to get up and chase us. Good idea. So it was so exciting. We were in the vehicle, and within, I don't know, four or five minutes, we looked down the road, and I have never seen Dad so excited in my whole life. It's one of his favorite creatures. What was it? A dung beetle. I thought we were on a dung beetle. Are those dung beetles? One, two, there's seven of them up there. Go, go on up there. Can He's you... got to dodge them. <laughs> want to stop here? Yeah, let's stop. That's so interesting. I've, I've never seen that many ever. Look at this. I've never seen this much action of dung beetles. Can I go up there and look at them? Sure, just careful. What's... The elephant over there. Well, hold on. You mean I got a choice between an elephant and a dung beetle? I'll yes. take a dung beetle any day. <laughs> I mean, they were everywhere in all your trips to Africa for, I don't know, 30 years. Yep. You said you've never seen never. that many. Oh, gosh, don't step on them. No, no, wait, there's a dung beetle down a ball of dung. But look over here, Kathy. Wait, 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 look at this. Come here, Nick. Oh, look I've at this. never seen that wait, wait, many. Wait, wait, Is wait, that wait. normal? Wait, are they fighting over this piece of dung, or are they just playing They're with it? They're fighting. It's easier to steal someone else's house than build your own. <laughs> this is their house they're doing here and go live in it? 
Yes, as any species, especially with humans, how we make the men work and make the balls and then the females lay their eggs in it. They then bury the dung and the babies um, eat their way out of it. So they have food as they, oh, as the they hatch, yes. Wow. Wow, wait, look at this. This is like oh dung ball gosh. city. Holy, wait, wait, wow. There's a different oh, species gosh. over there. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, what's the green one? Wow. The green ones are the emerald dung beetles. Brown ones are copper dung beetles. And you get over 130 different species of dung beetle. So the elephant goes to the bathroom. All of a sudden, the dung beetles just swarm in on it, right? Yep. Look at this one here. Yep. He's just starting his dung ball, see? Oh, this is not good. This is all real warm stuff, too, by the way. Well done. Amazing. And it's, they're quite it's, it's, a living, it's a living museum of dung beetles. Let me put that back. Look how fast they can roll that thing. Okay, Kathleen. Yes. Go get your dung ball and bring it up here. We're going to have a okay. race. Okay, okay. Nikki, you going to join us? Yes. Because they were in this little road through the bush there, and they were each on each side of the road where the wheels go. And there were dung beetles going up and down like this. I said, let's have a race, a dung beetle race. Okay, one, two. Okay, mine's oh, in the middle. Where's the finish line? Okay, here's the finish line. My Kay. foot. One, two, two three. three. Go that way. Ah, look, 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 it's going, it's going, it's going. Oh, Nikki. <laughs> Shoot. Here Come we on. Go. <laughs> yours is not mine's all, well yeah, all. mine's not very. I'll give you a head start. Wait Thank a you very much. Go ahead. Woohoo! Oh, Nikki won. <laughs> oh, there you go. After the race, we needed to get the dung beetles off the road. Not the easiest job. Once the beetles were out of harm's way, we were back on the road. Thank you, Bernie. Once we passed the dung beetles, we thought we had just a great start to our safari. And then all of a sudden, is that a rhino right there? Yeah. We're out there trying to save dung beetles and rhino in the bushes. We decided to drive around for a closer look. There she is. Oh, she's got a baby. Oh, oh she's away. Coming up. Look at her pushing against her mom's leg. Oh, oh, Nikki. Her mom had been eaten by a cheetah. Next on Jack Hanna's Into the Wild. We're exploring Zululand in South Africa's Zulu Nyala Game Reserve. We've just pulled up on one of our favorite species, but unfortunately, it's the one that's highly poached in Africa, the white rhino. Luckily, this one is doing fine. It has a newborn calf by her side. That's like a toy. A wind up toy. Their ears, they're incredible. Yeah, they can turn their ears all the way around to catch sound. They don't have very good eyesight, so they rely on their hearing. It's obviously the white rhino, the way it's eating grass, but and that baby's been born, but what, how old? Four months. Four months? Yeah. Wow. Boy or girl, little baby? I think it's a little female. Oh, look at her pushing against her mom's leg. Huh. Does the mother still let nurse? Yes. She's still got lots of growing to do. And. It was something else. Very, very close. We got to get to them, and we got to watch them for quite a long time. It was wonderful. Look at her eat that grass. As I was saying, the grass is so green here, I can't get over it. We've been very lucky. We've had lots of rain so far. Watching them right now, Nikki, she has not stopped eating. She's like a giant lawnmower. She keeps going and going. How much do they eat? Over 200 pounds of grass a day. 200 pounds? Crazy, hey? Crazy. And she's still got such a nice figure. <laughs> <laughs> she's gorgeous. It's hard to talk about rhinos without talking about the poaching that has nearly wiped out the entire species. Nikki told us that even the rhinos here on this protected reserve are at risk of attack. It's just hard for me to believe. You're telling me that a poacher would come in here and kill that mom and take her horn and just let the baby be there. Is that true? Yeah, disgusting, hey? My understanding is that big, beautiful horn there is worth about two to $300,000. $65,000 per kilogram. And an yeah. average rhino horn is about six to seven kilos. Boy, oh, she's a beautiful horn. She sure does. You don't often see them that big, you know? This beautiful mother and baby rhino made their way down to a river to keep cool while we headed back to the main lodge. Nikki had a surprise for us that she knew we would adore. Nikki! Hello, my dear. Oh, oh Nikki. It was a baby Niala. It was a couple of months old, and she had been hand rearing it. And she brought us into a little area in front of her house, and we were able to give it its bottle and have a cuddle. It was incredible. So now, just exactly what happened to this little th uh, animal? Just, you found her at a day old? Yeah, a day or two, her umbilical cord was still attached. Her mom had been eaten by a cheetah. Come, Belega. Oh. What's her name? Belega. So the one day I took her outside, I thought I was very clever, and I took her outside to pick the ticks off her, and she bolted. And I didn't know if she was going like, to survive or not, so I didn't give her a name. And she bolted, and we chased her and chased her and chased her in the bush, and eventually we caught her. And so she got the name Belega, which means run. <laughs> hey, 
Here we go. Oh, she's gorgeous. Yeah, you see. I've got yummies for you. Oh, Nikki. She's gorgeous, eh? She's beautiful. She normally comes with a bottle straight away, but she's just a bit nervous because she's never had this many people around her before. Oh, she's so soft. Now, what will happen to the colouring as she gets older? She'll stay the same. The males change colouring, but she'll stay the same. Gorgeous. And how big will they get? She'll get probably about that big. So she's still got lots of growing to do. Oh, she's hungry. Oh, my God. So this is her dinner. What will you do with her when she gets older? I'll release her. She is so beautiful. An interesting thing about Nyala, they don't have top teeth. Did you know that? No, yeah. what? It's cool. Oh, you wake Kathleen, up. Kathleen, Kathleen. No. Yeah, there's bottom, but Should no top. Keep that is way. wild. So how did she eat? How did she pick up grass? With her tongue and her bottom teeth, and then they push it to the back. Oh, gorgeous. Well, you've done a great job. You know, it's not easy to raise a wild animal like this. Best baby ever, four-legged ones. <laughs> <laughs> What's really cute was little old Watson. Watson's a little dog, and, and the two of, Watson helped raise this little thing. And most dogs would chase it and run it down, but not Watson. He, he protected it. The dog doesn't mind being with her? Oh, they're always together. They love each other. Oh, oh she's. Oh, what's wrong? Watson I think Watson wants, wants to wants play. <laughs> then go play. Go play with your buddy. After visiting with the baby Nyala, we decided to learn more about the Zulu culture that's defined this region for thousands of years. On our way to the local village, Nikki told us to watch out for cheetahs. Sure enough, we spotted one resting on the hill. I, I didn't spot it right away. It was a cheetah. It was, it was almost like a picture, like it couldn't be put more perfect than sitting up there on this mound, this cheetah. So what's this one doing right now, this cheetah, Nikki? Is this um, part of a couple? There is a male and a female. Um, this is the male. The female's out hunting. Oh, is she always the one that does the hard work? No, they're actually solitary. So the male will make his kills, right. the female will look after herself. They only get together when they're mates. Hmm. Oh. So why do they have those dark marks on these eyes there? For when they're hunting, to absorb the light, so they have better eyes because they don't eat carrots. <laughs> so it's just like a football or baseball player in our country. They look at the lights, they look at the lights like this and they have chalk under their eyes to help deflect the light. Yes, exactly. So this cheetah is obviously up on a high point, looking all around this whole valley here, it seems like. Is that what they usually do, try to get a higher place to find prey? Uh, it's a va not to find prey, but to more for predators, as it's a vantage point so that they know if there are any predators coming. I see. God, that gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, wow. So where do you think the cheetah's going right now? I think he's thirsty. Oh, there she goes. Yeah, you're right, so You're Nikki. right. He stays alert even when he's drinking, doesn't he? He's kind of looking around, making sure no one's creeping up on him. The cheetah has speed, no doubt about it, but it doesn't have the power to stand there like a lion and, and, and take everybody out. Always take that quick drink and look up, look around, another drink. They always take their time. So, Nikki, if you looked at him there just a second ago, um, he was shaking his tail a little bit, and it almost looked like he was perhaps scent marking. You're right. Yeah. That's exactly what he was doing. They sent Mark on high areas and on trees yeah, as no, no, he's doing he's now. Right now. Wow, he's so marking. is that to tell everyone that. else this is my patch, yeah, stay away? That. Yes, okay. exactly. That was incredible marking there. Do you see that? And if you look at what he's doing, he's almost going around the perimeter of the quarry. Do you think he'll probably bed down in here tonight? Yes, they bed on high points, vantage points, um, also under trees where they know that they're safe. What an opportunity to see two wild cheetahs in one day. As this cheetah wandered out of sight, we continued our journey to the Zulu village. It was toward the end of the day and uh, we pulled up and sure enough, right on top of this gorgeous setting on top of this hill that overlooked everything. Uh, and the Zulus were there to greet us. Jack, are you fine, Jack? Welcome to Zulu. Welcome to Zulu. Yeah. Kathleen, well, how are you doing? This is the Zulu people. This is the welcoming song. The song they sing right now. When the lady, they already pay what you call lobola. Remember, no wife for free here. In Zulu culture, one wife is eleven cows. So then, this song they sing now is for the lady to say, bye-bye to his mother, bye-bye to his father. So wait, wait. To have one of them as a wife, you have to give them 11 cows yes. as a parent? Yes. What about 10 cows? No, 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 no. 11. Okay, what about 12 cows? No. 11. Okay, I want to see your village. Okay, all right. Now, let's go inside and see what they do inside here. Thank you. The 
looks like Kathleen found her somebody. My daughter found a Zulu. Coming up. He gonna tell me what I have, and he's gonna fix me. This is a cow poo. That medicine is for stomach. Next on Jack Hanna's Into the Wild. At the Zulu Nyala Game Reserve in South Africa, my daughter Kathleen and I are receiving a lively welcome from the local Zulu tribe. And he sat us down and we, he told me stories about the Zulu and then he said, well, I'd like to meet a fortune teller and a witch doctor. A uh, fortune teller I can t tell her I can take, but the witch doctor, I thank goodness I wasn't sick at that time. She's the fortune teller. A fortune teller? Yes. Okay, he's a doctor? Yes. What is that, grass? That uh, medicine is for stomach. And then, like you see, this is a cow poo. Then uh, it's mixing with the tree. Okay. So in the stomach, you know what? It's, it's cleaning I everything. See. There. I see. That came out of the stomach, so you put it back in the stomach. Yes. <laughs> <In> the stomach. <laughs> so normally, what we do, if anyone's sick in the village, we go to the fortune teller. And then the fortune teller oh, can, I see. It can tell. I got you now. She's going to tell me what I have, and he's going to fix me. Right? Yes, right. exactly. Okay. exactly. Okay, tell me what I have. I better find out real quick. No, no, it's just it. Oh. Shaking the pulse. It's it's it. What's wrong with you? Ah. He's inviting oh. us to start. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It's a bunch of shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. let me see. But, hey, no. lady, tambo, lady, tie in, lady, zabo, zin. Uh, you know what? When you look at this, this, it's you it. say you, you still got a nice future. A nice future. Oh, thank you. Put him back in there and throw him out again. Let's see if yeah, it yeah. gets better. You'll throw it again. Yeah. It's it. Looks like the same thing as last time. You got only one wife? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You want another wife? Do I want another one? Mm -hmm. Because you, you still got, no. you still, you still got the chance that you can have another wife if you want to. No, I can't do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and also, your family, they are very good. They are good. Yeah. I'm very, very lucky. Yes. Thank you so much. Sabona in Zulu. Thank you. Sabona. Sabona. Here you say, you say Makosi. 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 Then right there at sunset, he wanted to dance. That's what they do at the end of the day. And sure enough, we get up there and we start dancing and I got to play the drums and, and it was beautiful. And all of a sudden, the, the, that momentum stopped and they played the national anthem of, of South Africa. And I must tell you, it was like our national anthem, it was like Rwanda's national anthem, it was magnificent. It was the perfect way to end the day, it really was. <laughs> Although we've been to Africa countless times, the wildlife we discover and the people we meet never cease to amaze us. From the tiny dung beetles to the massive rhinos and our new friends in the Zulu Nation, we had a fantastic day. Best of all, we know there's even more to see on our next trip to South Africa's beautiful Zulu Nyala Game Reserve.